Hello guys and welcome to Make Your Roguelike in Haskell Part 2. In Part 1 we set up our project and created a rudimentary input system and I hope in this part we're actually gonna manage to get some update loop going. So one of the feedbacks I got from my friend is that um, I should ask myself who my audience is uh, because he found as a known programmer that I'm not really explaining details and I think that's exactly what I want. So you see, if you're interested in questions as if, or answers, um, what is a func functor? What is a monad? Um, why do I need to do this inside IO type? Um, you can find answers to this fairly easy just using DuckDuckGo or, or whatever search engine you have. What I want to do is, once you understand how to program in Haskell, why should you choose one thing or one way of programming against another? However, I did decide to take the intro of each video to just quickly reiterate what did we do last time. So let's go to our input and I'm gonna show what did we done. So here, I'm sorry, we have uh, our main function that returns an input type that's wrapped with a curses type. Now, curses type is just like an IO, right? And the reason why is because once you call this function here, get event, this is an IO function. It blocks until you press a key on a keyboard. Because this is obviously not pure and it's an effect, the whole type has to be wrapped with it. Um, what did we do? Then we, we make sure that what we get is then run through this simple translation function and just returns back one of the values from this input enumeration. <clears throat> now, one issue that I created is that I wanted to narrow a range of this function and subsequently narrow the domain of the update function. And I did that by creating a direction module that wraps a 2D vector. Why? Because here I want to move and I want to be able to narrow the types of the... I want to narrow the amount of values I can type in here. So direction just wraps a 2D vector and I expose four smart contractors. Well, smart. Um, basically, this means that I can legally, outside of this direction module, I can only construct direction in four different ways. So I thought, okay, this is exactly what I wanted to do. But the problem is somewhere down the line, I'm actually going to have to treat this uh, move direction value uh, as something that's gonna be an input to my uh, update. And that means that I'm gonna have to unwrap the ve vector and I'm gonna have to deal with all possible vector values that come in. I don't want to do that because the reason why you would want to do this is for example, if you want to handle things such as teleporting through the move function. I don't want to do that. I, if I want to teleport, I'm going to have an enumeration here saying teleport, right? So my initial gut feeling was correct. And my initial gut feeling was not to create a separate module, but just to create an enumeration. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to nuke our direction. Bye-bye. And then here, And of course, down here. <clears throat> now, we are sure that we've covered absolutely every possible combination of values that we can construct. There's even on the update side, these are all the values, actually minus one because nothing, when the nothing is emitted, we just recursively call get input back right here, right? So we're gonna keep performing these transformations until we run into a just value, something that we actually transform, like, um, yeah, I'm pointing with the finger as if you can actually see it. Um, <laughs> these, these, once we hit one of these letters here, they become a valid input for us right there. And this is what we're gonna be processing on the uh, update side. So let's see if this builds, it should. Bingo, and let's test it. So uh, we need to include input, get input. 
Ah, yes. Uh, as I said, the get input, it's not an IO value, it's a curses value. Curses value just wraps IO. But that still means in order to convert it into IO, you need to do something that's called a run. And we're going to do that by including our end curses module. And there should be run curses. There you go. See? It's, it's, it says right here run curses takes a value, takes any value that's wrapped by curses monad and emits an IO that contains the value of the same type, right? Because it's the same same type variable here and here. So we're going to do run curses on get input and block. So if I keep pressing, let's say, letter uh, U, nothing happens because we recursively right here just keep going back into calling another get input. So let's say if you hit H, we get back, move, move west, right? H here, move west, great. Let's move on, but before that, we need some background music. Hopefully it's not too loud. All right. I wonder if this is a good name. Let's call this event instead. Events to input yeah. Event to input is gonna be curses events to game events. That makes sense, right? You know what, actually, this could probably be called like that. Next event, I like this. <coughs> so input in a state, we're gonna call it game and get new game. Now here, <clears throat> we're gonna copy all of these combinations. Default 
game. <clears throat> okay. So what is our game? It's obviously avatar or player character or whatever and that's gonna be something a map probably an instance of some tile map data and there's probably gonna be a list items <clears throat> I figure we're gonna have like not hundreds of items per map so it's probably perfectly acceptable to just keep them in a list and same for the enemy. Uh, nice. Obviously this is a first version, so this is gonna be refactored later on, but for now, so. So these things, they all need their positions. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a data type. And let's call it... Uh, entity. With a... Uh, uh, with a type variable. And entity. is going to contain position in the world the reason why I'm writing this and I'm not changing this to word type is because the word is going to wrap around, right? So if you're, for example, at zero and you do minus one, you're going to end up at the max the value of word. And I got I got beaten by that quite a few times. Uh, yeah, position and uh, object. We need. Actually, this can go here. Perfect. Okay, I will explain shortly what it is. So this data, as you can see, is just uh, joining a vector, to two-dimensional vector, and whatever data type we parameterize it with. Because this, this isn't a type, this is a type constructor. And it becomes a type once you associate, well, once you fill in this type variable with an actual concrete type. Um, why am I making it a functor? Because what I want to do I want to specify that this data type is just 
mapping absolutely any value, any valid Haskell value into a category where all values have two dimensional positions. And that's it. That's literally what it is. The Defun functor fmap just states that once you this is the, the type of fmap. It means that once you pass a function that converts type A into type B, where B can also be A, it just says that it can be any different type, and then you pass a value of the functor that contains type A, like for example, let's say we have entity string and we want to convert strings into, into length. So the entity string would become entity int, and right here, this function would be length, blah 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 uh we could probably do an applicative as well uh well here that has a function TTP that has a value mm, okay it's gonna be entity uh, loss I wanna say that's this is fine. Oh, actually, we can just do this in F map F or E. There you go. We want to verify the loss for this, so we're gonna this is gonna crash. This is fine. I want to say. I'm sure some of you, if you spot the error, you're going to let me know. The reason why I'm stopping is because I'm thinking, do I want to add lens here? Because lens would make this a freaking piece of cake. But let's just keep it for now. Avatar is gonna be equal avatar G. I think you can do this. Oh, 
old avatar. See the issue with Haskell? This this was interpreted like this. So we need another quality of life extension, negative literals. East is left, so that's minus one. Right is one. I'm stumped at how ugly this is. But you know what? I have a bad habit of continually reconstructing my code until I'm happy with it. And I'm not going to do this now. So... So we're gonna keep this if it works and we're gonna fix it later on when it doesn't. But thanks to this function right here, we can narrow the pattern matching only to a variable and use the function to return the vector. All right, regarding attack, open, close, get, talk, idle. For this, we have no implementation so we're just going to return old game for now Belt. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> the problem here is that we have a direction constructor that's called right, and this name clashes with the standard prelude constructor from the data type either. So we have a data type uh, prelude hiding. We have a data type calling either, and either exposes left and right constructors, right? And it's the data type itself is parameterized with with two type variables. So left and right can both contain a different uh, value that carry with them. But uh, we don't use either here, and we can just safely hide it. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing here. Yeah. Yeah. No, 
what am I doing? What the hell? <laughs> I feel stupid. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why did I think that I actually used up, down, left and right absolutely everywhere except... I don't know. Alright. Okay. <clears throat> So, in our main, what we're gonna do, we're gonna ask, uh, we're gonna run curses, obviously. Import qualified UI curses, uh, C. Well, we can run this as a first thing curses. And then do. The first thing is gonna be next event. And this is gonna be event, and then we can do update. Update, we need an initial game. And E, and we're gonna get a new game. And then this has to be called recursively. So, we need a recursive thing. Here in curses, game loop. Where game loop obviously this is the sim simplest possible thing that can exist and this is gonna be initial game game These things need constructors just so that we can actually construct them even if they're completely uber data types, but it's just for now. Oh yeah. Okay. We can do this too. Mm. Entity. Position with value to a function, this function of value. There you go. Now we're complete. Uh, right. This is the basic update, but the thing is we're not gonna be able to see anything here, so we actually want to show some information, basically render. But for now, <clears throat> let's just, our render is gonna be showing the position of the player. Uh, You know what? We can do better. Let's see. Curses. Draw. Did my auto completion crash? Yes, that's what we want. And lift is what? Carrot 
and our attributes. And our attributes are what? Yeah, all right. Sure. All right. So our glyph, uh, PC glyph, is going to be C glyph of this character with no attributes. Nah, actually, let's make it attribute. Uh, <coughs> attribute bold. Then one of the functions was draw glyph that takes a glyph and produces an update. Let's see draw glyph, PC glyph. We probably have to set up a cursor somewhere. Cursor, beautiful, and another update. Great. Let's see, move cursor, and we want to move cursor. Uh, to a new position, and a new position is going to be. Position of <coughs> of avatar from the new game, and you're gonna draw a glyph right there. Uh, we probably want to erase the glyph from the previous pot, so. Let's make another one. Space clip. We should probably call this a render function just so that we are somewhat. There should be uh, something that turns updates into curses. La, 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 la. Update. Run update. No. Update. Update. window we said we're gonna be using the default window right there's a concept of default window perfect Def Let's see default window so update window and then in here Cursor, draw cursor. I want to say that's it. Hmm. All right, initial game. Okay. Entity character. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna put them all at zero zero, and that's it. Empty, empty. No items, no enemies, and tile map. Whatever the bogus tile map is.
Why am I doing this? This from integral call? Because, as you can see, move cursor requires integer and integer. And the position I'm having here, here has a type int. Integer and int are not the same data types. And we have from integral function that basically takes any integral type and converts it into any number type. Because both integer and int, they are both integral and they're both new, I can use this function to convert one into another and that's it. Uh, that should be it. No. Oh, right. We want to actually see the game we are rendering. RC error. No idea. Time to read. That is pretty much what we did, My, minus the set echo, but I really don't think this accounts for absolutely anything. I guess I'm going into minus. This is a problem. So let's start. Hey, how come it's not buffering? I wonder if us drawing space there is messing everything up. So let's just try create a trail and we'll fix uh, erasing where we were later on. So we 
least. I think this is a mistake because yeah, this is correct. And uh, we're gonna add something right here when we move. We're gonna just output what is our current position. Okay, so remember when I said that uh, <clears throat> right here, the curses type wraps the IO. Um, the, put, the put string right here, it's an IO function, right? Uh, cabal, cabal, I just wanna prove, right? So put string line, it's an IO function. But there's a way we can twist it and make it into the uh, curses function just by lifting it into the curses monad. Uh, the lift IO is in import control monad IO class, right? There you go. And we're gonna get lift IO out of it. The reason why this works is because lift IO, um, I'm gonna show you, uh, control monad IO class. Lift IO takes an instance of IO uh, and converts it. Look at here. So it takes any IO value and it converts it into any other monad that is the instance of monad IO. This is super useful when you have things like here, you know, I have a curses module, but I also wanna do some IO. Because the curses module instances monad IO, it means it can do anything that an IO monad does and some extra. And so that they don't re-implement these functions, making them, I don't know, curses put string line or curses uh, read file, they just provide, they just make themselves uh, instance of monad IO and then you have lift IO function to do this. But this still doesn't solve our problem, why is this crushing and it should not? Oh yeah, the character is not, yeah, 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 sure. We're almost right on the time, so there you go. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, I know exactly where the issue is. It's right here. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, there is. Okay, so see, we start the game loop and we have variable game, which is our old game. We call, get the next event and then we produce a new game. And then we render a new game, but we restart the loop with exactly the old game we had. So basically game loops keep keeps working with the initial game. And this is crap because we want to run the next game loop with our new game. So this is going to solve one half of a problem. And that one half is that the, our position is actually going to change. The problem it's not going to solve is the part where we are not seeing our little avatar moving. Uh, okay, well, the position keeps increasing and that's perfectly fine. A crash, good. Oh, why is it not drawing? I want to hide the, the blinking cursor. It should be some some function somewhere. Uh, 
hide. Display. No. Clear. We should probably call clear during render. See clear. Maybe right here. Up here we just. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> it's another window. Um, right here I added clear. Up here we're just preparing our data that we need to render. So, you know, right here we can do this. <clears throat> Colors, this is data for later. Cursor mode, there you go. That's exactly what we need. Set cursor mode. That's gonna go right here. Set cursor mode. For some reason, I, my auto completion is not working. Cursor, cursor invisible. We can destroy this because we know that the data is correct. Do we have to like throw the window or something? There you go. After all of an application that has been let me call render to update terminal's contents. And I'm a moron that forgot about that. And render is just the cursest thing. All right, so we should add this and this should be just fine. Uh, yeah, okay. So we're gonna have to do it like this. Inside and then see render. <coughs> yeah. There you go. Our little guy. Interestingly enough, um, if you've been following code right now, uh, if you'll be pressing keys up and down, you're gonna see your avatar moving left and right. And the reason why is because the move cursor over here, it takes first the row, the row, and the then it takes the column. Our row is our Y and our column is our X. So make sure to flip this, right? Y and then X, and now it should work. The reason why I keep guessing, uh, getting this error right here is because, precisely what I said before, um, our positions are going into negative. So when you try to draw something in minus one, the cursors go bazunga. So what we can do here, we can be a bit smarter right here. Position. Mm -hmm. and we can f map because i know that the vectors in linear you can f map on uh, on their values and we're gonna f map the value bigger than zero so if we end up in a negative it's gonna put the value back into zero 
and we should probably like later on do the range so that it can go out of out, outside of some range but we're gonna have collision detection and all of that so it doesn't really matter we just don't want to crash crash the ugly. but there you go we can move around the screen and it's not crashing even if i'm trying to put it outside of bounds there you go our little avatar See, I really wish I remember to add a quit event, but Control C works. Let's just do that quickly. Let's add a quit event, and then uh, we're gonna call it call it the end. Uh, see, one thing which I don't like: these are all actual in-game actions. This is more like a system action. So what we're gonna do next time, we're gonna separate the event into two, two types of events. We're gonna have system events and game events so that we know which part of code has to handle what. But anyway, we're gonna quit using uh, Q key. Uh, Q just quit. And then on this side, update, if you run into quit, we don't really care about the game. Uh, no, actually we do. Mm, yeah, yeah, we do. OK, and OG is running, not anymore. And we need to add a running tracker here. Simple bool should be enough. <clears throat> we created an initial game somewhere, I think right there sure it's gonna run <clears throat> and then when this switches to false right here we have to make sure uh, we want to do this we want to do this only if the game is running well we can think about it two way do we go into recursion when the game is running or do we do this process when the game is running? You know what, let's just put it here. So when, when not running, no, obviously, when running, continue running. If not, not, done. Mm, okay when I think this should be in the control monad I wanna say when is just like if in stateful language is basically you provide we provide what's gonna happen uh, where am I yeah you you this is like your if, right? When this is true, execute this. The implicit else just returns pure, pure, pure unit. Uh, did I make? Yeah, I did. All right. So we can run around and if I press Q, it takes it. Not bad. Well, it's okay. For we are 55 minutes in. I want to say this plus previous hour. This is hour and a half. We have some basic game loop. We have some basic input, some basic rendering. It's not bad. Uh, stay tuned for the next time. And bye bye.